Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I've been waiting weeks to use that line. Um, thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, it's going to be very free form. Uh, we've got a lot of pictures that we're going to be showing. I'm going to be talking really specifically about my experience, our club. Um, I'm in a private club, but I think there's a lot of applications here that you can use, whether you're at a resort, public course, municipal course, wherever you might be. Um, we're going to touch a little bit on food and beverage, too, and some of the other non-golf uh, activities that we've got going. Uh, we're get, I think we had about 50 people registered. We're kind of ticking closer to about 40. Um, I've been checking the names. It looks like we've got a good representation of people from all the way from up here in the Great White Northern chapter down to uh, San Diego. And as Nikki said, please jump in at any time with a question. Uh, send it to her. If it's appropriate, she'll jump in and ask me. We can uh, talk about it. And again, these are, again, a lot of this is my experience. Um, this is such a dynamic time and such an unusual time. Uh, I, I've certainly never dealt with much like this. We, when we were uh, probably, I guess it was a year and a half ago, when we had the wildfires that came really close to Sherwood. Actually, the picture you're looking at the screen, that the top of that hillside there was on fire in November of 2018. And I actually did a webinar on, um, last year on managing a crisis remotely. So I try to take a lot of those lessons and, and do what I can to apply it. Uh, to what's gone on here. And, and again, it's, but it's so many things are changing. You know, this webinar, when we started talking about doing this webinar 10 days ago, I had totally different protocols on certain things. Some things haven't changed even in the last few days. Um, those of you in LA County, congratulations. Sounds like you're getting, you got golf back again. Although I keep seeing more and more uh, information about one place is doing carts like this. One place is doing carts like that. County's allowing something, city's allowing something. Um, private clubs or some are saying no golf carts. So, um, you know, I, I just, again, one of the overarching messages is just pay attention, look for information. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a lot about the, the governance here uh, going forward, but this picture below here, this was really our, uh, um, sorry, the last picture, um, was, was, uh, our first day back. Um, you know, you can see there we have three golfers walking. Um, there's some, there are some golfers up in the fairway who are, uh, we we're going ahead and, you know, we've got pull carts. So again, there's a, there's pull and push carts. That's, that's something we almost never have had here at our club. Um, at least that we haven't had it in my time. Um, but it's been a great way to let people play, uh, play the course and, and get out and enjoy it. You know, it's been, I think sometimes we forget, you know, and you always have to contextualize golf versus, you know, life and death situations. But, you know, for us, for the membership and with so many people who live in the surrounding community where we are, it's really been something they've looked forward to and they've been chomping at the bit to get out and participate in. Um, you know, it's when you live, you know, when you, you're trying to balance your own family, the business member services, those types of things, sometimes you can get lost in, you know, in all kinds of things, whether you think something's not important or something's too important. Um, but it is, you know, you really just have to listen to a lot of people and, and try and take it all in. And, you know, it's such a trying time for so many people and, you know, you get, um, you get so many, so many opinions and thoughts. Um, we're, if you can go to the next slide, Bryce, um, you know, we, we, as we go on forward have really just lean on our County order, um, from our public health officer. Now you're, one of the things you're going to find is every member has a different take on what your, what your, um, County or city orders are. And, you know, you just, you kind of have to listen to it and you have to understand it. And, you know, sometimes it can help you understand just the mindset that the members are in and what they're, what they're going for. So let's, let's talk a little bit um, right off the bat about working with the local governments and the connections. So, um, you know, we, so I'm, again, I'm here in Ventura County. Um, I was lucky enough to connect Todd Kiefer, our immediate past president of the section is a Las Posas. And so he and I, um, obviously know each other very well and connected. And then we started reaching out and connecting to other operators, um, of both private clubs, some of the public courses, some of the city courses, um, you know, uh, here in um, Ventura County and just trying to connect and get a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of um, sort of a, a group together, which we wound up calling an alliance. And we wanted to figure out how can we, how can we, what's our best route and what's our best way to go. And we, we, you know, it's very often you can reach your public officials when things are going well, but when things are going badly, they're getting tugged in 8 million different directions. And as probably most of you realize golf wasn't at the top of most, 
most of these um, public officials' agendas. So, you know, we took an we took an approach, and we're gonna Nikki's gonna jump in and talk about the SCGA here in just a second. Um, well, actually, Nikki, why don't I just turn it over to you for one second? Do you want to talk about the SCGA before I get into talking about Craig Kessler and some of the work we've done there? Sure, I appreciate it, Rob. Um, some of you may have seen an email that just went out probably within the the last hour. Uh, the Play It Safe campaign, and, and this is a collaboration uh, that the section did with the SCGA in an effort to educate all golfers, you know, and, and we all need to do our part um, as we reintroduce our game and get back to get back to business for us and get back to having fun on the golf course for our customers and members. So it was a great opportunity for the two associations to collaborate on and, and share messaging. You'll start to see more social media posts on this. Um, you obviously received a letter from both Tom and Kevin Heaney. Um, it's really just about all of us doing our part, you know, for, for us as golf professionals and facility operators, and then on the SCGA side as golfers, you know, and as our members and our customers. If everyone does our part um, and acts responsibly, then then our game can continue to, to operate and to open and, and be, you know, just a great opportunity for people to get back outdoors and, and get back to, to some sort of, of normalcy. So, Thanks, Rob, for the opportunity to talk about that. Yeah, thanks, Nikki. And, and again, I think that just underscores the need and the, you know, the the um, availability of, re of resources to, you know, there's so many times throughout the year you get emails from the SCPGA, the SCGA, whatever other professional organizations you're involved with, whether it's CMA or GCSA, you know, and, and it's very easy throughout the year to ignore those. And most of the time we don't need the message that they're, that they're providing, but there, there are some great resources there. You know, your vendors are another great resource um, in providing, you know, helping provide guidance, helping share what other what other businesses are doing. Um, you know, so I'll, and I'll get a little bit more into our business here in a second. But so back to the, the government. So we we talked with Craig Kessler. We were talking, and, and for those of you who don't know, Craig Kessler is working for both the SCGA and the SCPGA. Um, you know, great resource, great advocate for the game of golf uh, at all levels of the government here in California. And so we were trying to craft a message about, um, you know, what we, you know, what we wanted to do with golf. And initially, you know, some, some people were saying, well, let's, you know, let's tell, let's tell these county officials how safe golf is and let's let them know, you know, why golf should be allowed back. And sort of looking at what some of the other counties have, have done or did, um, and some of you who are in those counties know that, that there were, I think, maybe some things that they'd rather, um, if they had them to do over, they'd do them over again. You know, instead of trying to say, hey, Mr. or Miss uh, Public Official, you're stupid, you know, we took the approach of, you know, we want, we understand you've got a lot on your plate. We understand that you're considering things about golf and other recreation. Whenever the time is right, we'd like to have some dialogue about how we can safely and responsibly allow golf to come back. And so we drew, actually lit, drew, lit, drew up a bunch of protocols ourselves, you know, for what we thought was a safe return to golf. And, and again, it wasn't anything, I thought we were being ultra safe. Um, and, and eventually when, you know, shortly thereafter, we'd cracked this message a few days later, uh, we got the response from the County and they were allowing golf back. And, and actually it seemed like they, they were a little more relaxed even than we were about, about some things. Some things were dead on them. You could almost see the verbiage that we'd given them in the health order. Um, you know, there were some other, you know, there were some other things that I was, we were surprised that they pleasantly surprised in most cases that they, uh, they chose to go that route, you know, and, and again, back to the accessible accessibility to the public officials. That's again, why it's so important to have this alliance and try and get together as a group, because, you know, I, by myself, am much weaker than I was, you know, than I am now with these about dozen other uh, operators who all have varying degrees of connections with their supervisors, you know, the health office officers, um, you know, the different county officials, you know, we had, you know, one, one of our operators had a, has a social basketball relationship with um, one of the public officials who was very helpful um, in, in assisting us. And again, it wasn't that he assisted us in getting golf back, but he said, you know, you guys, you can't push it. Here's what we're, you know, here's where we are. So he gave us a little bit of guidance um, in, in helping us along there. And, you know, again, I think it's, it's understanding that golf is not the be all end all, but 
I think they also understood that there were, you know, there are jobs on the line. There, this was a healthy, uh, a healthy outdoor recreation activity that people could engage in. And, you know, the, the biggest thing there, too, is that we approach it as a golf community. Uh, it would have been very easy for myself or any of the other private clubs to go and say, well, we're a private club. We can really limit who comes in here and we can do this and this and this. And, you know, we should be separate from a, from a, a public course. Well, we didn't think that was right, number one, ethically. And number two, we actually didn't think it was going to resonate in any case with um, with the public officials. And, you know, I think as as you approach this as a group, you know, all the, the rising tide will lift all the boats. And, you know, we uh, I think we were successful that way. I think, you know, there were there were some again, some counties that I've seen where they've had these conversations and they've said, well, we're going to do this together. And, you know, that kind of that kind of bleeds in with, you know, what Nikki was talking about in this next point where it says partnerships with other courses is it's, it's really important that you try to maintain communications with one another. Um, now I'm going to get on a soapbox for a minute here is we have courses in our County who frankly, I think have broken the health order. And while everybody's entitled to operate their business, however they want in this case, a misstep or an egregious misstep, I guess you'd say by, any one or group of our courses, in my opinion, can cost us the potentially cost us the ability to have golf um, around. You know, and I, I spoke to some of those operators. I had communications with them. Um, you know, and it's 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 challenging. I, I know there were operators I spoke to, who the operator themselves said, "You're right. What we're doing is really pushing the limits." But I have an owner or an ownership group or whoever who is pulling, you know, signing the paychecks and saying, "We've got to do this." for whatever reason. Um, I think some of those courses have, have pulled back a little bit and realized maybe they were pushing the envelope a little. Um, but I think it's, you know, the the phrase we keep using around our club with our membership is baby steps, baby steps, using the term gradual. Uh, you know, I think it has to be, it has to be as joint and as responsible as possible. Um, you know, I, I'm, you know, I get the calls from my members about, well, such and such a club is doing this. You know, and again, it doesn't matter whether it's resort, public, private, they hear about it, they think automatically they can do it. So then, you know, then it's up to me to say, well, look, this is the health order. Sometimes it's very black and white. Sometimes there's interpretation. Uh, we, we've chosen to take this, the um, more conservative uh, interpretation of most things. You know, now we've been reopened now for about two and a half weeks. And some of the things that were, it was a little gray and now we've seen other clubs do it, you know, and we've kind of talked about it. We said, okay, well, maybe we can do such and such a thing. Um, I'll talk about some examples here in a second, but again, try and stay in communication. Look at this as a partnership uh, with the other, with the other courses, you know, and as I say, connect with those professional associations. We listed four down at the bottom of the that slide there. Um, you know, there, there are great resources there. It's helpful to find out what people are doing. I'm encouraging everybody to pay attention to what um, Texas uh, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina are doing, you know, because they're a little bit ahead of us in some of the gradual reopening. Hopefully any hiccups or successes that they have, we'll be able to learn from or copy and, and go, uh, you know, go forward more successfully. Um, you know, the, you know, I've realized more and more that the professional associations that, that I'm involved with, which is all four of those that you see down there, and there are some great resources, um, and and sometimes it's it's as, you know it's just good to hear that some people are going through some of the same challenges as you are, um, but more often than not, you're finding out some new and creative solutions to the things that you're trying to work through. Uh, just talking about a few of these pictures here that we've got on the far right side there, you've got Jeff Fowler, our director of golf. You know we are going with uh, face masks when we're when we're um, either working closely with one another or connecting with the guests. Um, for those of you who've been wearing the face mask and trying to be in the operation, carrying on a conversation, it can be challenging. So if we're appropriately distanced, we might pull down the face mask or pull it up. Um, but again, we're being very cautious about what we're doing, you know, with, in terms of our operations. Um, you can see you have members carrying their bags. We don't have staff touching any items of, of any uh, member at all. You know, we've got, um, we have a bag room. It's been closed. So if somebody shows up and they don't have their bag, we will get their bag out and give it, give it to them. Um, but once they've accepted it, we're not taking it back until we, until we change the policy there. Um, the bottom middle picture there, a couple of our 
longtime tennis members, um, they were out for a walk that day. So there was a period when we were completely shut down for golf for a couple of weeks, um, starting in early April. And so we, we kind of took a look and what can we do? What can we offer to our membership? And so we allowed people to walk on the golf course. Uh, at the same time, we were doing our, our aeration, um, but people were walking on the golf course. They were jogging. So it was really nice to see people being able to utilize the facility. Um, we've actually got a small movement of members who are, really want us to keep nine holes closed, nine holes open, um, so they can walk on the closed nine. I've, told, I've shared that with our golf and greens committee, and not surprisingly, they were not exceptionally supportive. So we are keeping all of our golf holes uh, closed for golf. But on Mondays when we're doing our maintenance, we've actually kept the golf course available for members to walk. So again, you've got to forget about what, you know, this is one of the important messages, forget about whatever you used to do. And that may be aspirational for what you're trying to get to get to, but really look at what you can do in your facility. Um, how you can repurpose areas, how you can repurpose um, staff. That, for instance, the bottom left picture there, um, on the left is our facility maintenance director. On our right is our banquets manager. Um, as you can probably guess, our banquet business is non-existent and is non-existent in the, for the immediate future. So um, we've had, ironically, we've had some staff who've gotten some three managers who got uh, promotions into other facilities. And so we're currently not filling their positions, um, but we're able to repurpose some of the staff now that we've got. So for instance, our banquet manager, He's running our to-go food operation out of our men's uh, men's grill kitchen, and our you know our food operation, which I'll talk a lot more about in a little bit, has been really successful. And again, it's something that fits closely within his lane. You know, our facility maintenance director, you know, is now a very I don't want to say hands-on, but is very more off you know boots on the ground, where he's constantly walking around looking for looking for areas, looking for op- looking for areas we can utilize, looking for ways we can. Um, be safer, looking for opportunities for us to expand the operation in a really safe and responsible way. So again, you want to tap into all your resources outside your club, but also inside your club. And and I think now, you know, we're being all forced to be really creative. Perfect timing, Bryce. Um, So now how do you talk to them? How do you talk to the membership? Um, As many ways as you can. Uh, So we, right now, I send an email to the membership that pretty much goes probably about every two or three days. Um, we try, you know, for a while we were doing a, a daily email. Um, sometimes the news got a little bit sparse. So we've kind of gone every two or three days, especially when we, as we're getting updates from the, um, from the county and the uh, county government and, uh, and adjusting things. So we use, uh, we'll use our email system for the, for the most part. We're also using Instagram more just to promote what's going on at the facility um, our daily specials that are coming out of on our to-go to food program, um, highlighting just a lot of the little things that we've got going on. For instance, uh, starting today in the next three days, we've got a giveaway where we're giving away little flower pots with soil and seeds and, paint, and a set of paints for the child, you know, children of our members to take home and paint for Mother's Day. You know, Mother's Day is a four or five hundred person event for us that now we're not going to be doing. So we've, we've recreated um, we've recreated sort of some of the arts and crafts and some of the things we might do regularly on a mother's day and for people to take home. And, and again, you have to put, try and put yourself in the shoes of the member. You know, they're no different than many of us who have children at home. You know, I know my wife's got our four kids at home and they're, they've now gone through just about every recipe you can imagine. And so the crafts and the things you can do together, you know, Anything you can you can give to your membership, your clientele is great. We even just we did a simple around Easter. We did a we created a coloring and activity book that we were able to just email people they could print. We also had some printed they could pick them up here. So these are a lot of things that I mean something like that where you just email that to your membership costs you next to nothing other than somebody with somebody's time who has a little bit of creative talent. And you know you send that off to them, let them know you're thinking about them, give them something to hand to their kids to do. Um, you know, and then again, it's got that touch and that feel from the club. And, you know, the more you can personalize it, the better off, you know, the better off you are. We've done, um, some contests as well through that. We did during Easter, uh, throughout our the community here, we actually put up golden eggs. So people drove around, found a golden egg, took a picture of it. We've now given back kids earn free desserts. And you know, we did a whole thing where we were posting on Instagram there. So, there are, there are lots of opportunities, again, for you to connect and get that, you know, again, it's an emotional connection for a lot of people. 
in a lot of ways. There are clubs and, and again, whether you're private or public or, or resort, whatever, you know, those people are going there a lot, whether they go there every day or every week or every month, you know, that's a personal connection that there is now they're separated from and that they need to, that they need to reconnect to, or they're looking to for some way to reconnect to. So the more you can do it, do it, the better. You can see we've got a lot of signage. Um, it's just a move. We've got a few more signs we'll show you, but you know, we kind of pride ourselves on having minimal signage. I'm, I'm not a no signage type of person because I think some clubs do that, but you know, now we've got signage that directs people all over. Bryce, if you just go back real quick for one second. Um, you know, I want to talk about this, the communication tactic is the no overpromising because you're going to get a lot of people asking questions on when are you going to do this? Or I've got this idea. Or I heard so and so and so told me the county is going to do that, or this city's doing that, or this other county is going to do that. You know, I think you want to make sure, you know, it, it can be really tiresome, and you can you can it can almost be a burden when you've got people who are coming at you again and again and again. But again, most everybody, with a very small exception, are coming at you with very good intentions, very appreciative, trying to suggest things, also just wanting information. You know, you'd love to hear anything, anything with any amount of certainty, but we just know that that's, that that's not the case. But I think if you can say things like, that's really interesting, or we'll take a look at that. You know, we're going to talk to our management group. We're going to talk to our committee, our board, our owner, whomever it might be. Um, I think you can say, you know, I, I understand that as well, or I hope we can do that. Um, you know, certain, certain kind of buzzwords about, you know, what you're hearing from your county that you can let them know. Um, but again, you want to be really careful about the overpromising. You know, I I expected that um, probably early late last week we'd be having having an adjustment on the golf cart. What we have what we do with golf carts haven't heard anything. Um, you know, and I fortunately I didn't put that too much out there, but I I was intimating to a couple of members I spoke to that I thought we might get golf golf carts. And again, importantly here, as you're talking to members and as you're as you're letting people know what you do, do what you can when you can. You know, if, you know, one of the things that we've seen is sometimes the local governments are giving us three, four, five days of advance notice that on such and such a day, you'll be able to do this, or this is the new health order. You know, we've, there've been a couple occasions when we got a health order on late on a Saturday night that um, tennis was allowed as a recreation. That was something we were able to turn on the next day. Golf, on the other hand, we didn't have any staff scheduled. We actually had no clue that golf was coming back. So, um, we didn't have any golf till the following Tuesday. So, um, you know, be again, you've, you've got to get in this mode of you're almost preparing for the however many contingencies there are. Um, we'll, you know, we can talk about it in food and beverage, but I have no idea what's going to happen with food and beverage. Um, my guess is it's going to look something like some of these other states where food and beverage, a la carte dining, rather, you know, where you've got people coming in to sit down, whether it's outside or inside, will be on a 25 or 50 percent capacity basis. Um, you know, some of you are going to have to decide, is it even worth it for you to open your doors at that point for that, you know, in your food and beverage? Um, and it may not, you know, for us, we've, you know, we've got staff here working, doing a to-go program. So to have a la carte means shifting a little few of our resources and, and adding a little bit more um, for us to be able to do that, especially if it's on a limited basis. You know, so you, again, you have to start asking your question yourself about those questions now, but start asking them now and try to formulate plans, whatever it might be, so that you're not flat-footed when uh, when things come along. Bryce, can you go to the next slide? Rob, I'm going to jump in if you don't mind. Yeah, we've got please. we've got one question. I think you you've really addressed this for the most part, but maybe if you could um, think of something specific that comes to mind. So the question is from Charles Delory, who's out in the desert. Um, As I prepare to open my facility, is there anything that you missed in your opening? Uh, that you can share to to help us as we prepare to open. Um, I guess uh, so. Thanks for the question, Charles. So I'll probably come on. I'll probably stumble into a couple of things that are, aren't coming straight to mind right now as I go through this because this is really we're getting in more of the operational reopening. But I think um, try to try to almost hand, you know write up your document, write up your protocols because you're going to have to share that with especially if it's a membership. Or if you've got, again, no matter where you are, like we're, we're now emailing things to members, um, you know, how you, how you want to approach guests, for example, you know, emailing things to members that they can send to their guests. So, you know, what I would say is, you know, one of the things we missed initially and, 
and it didn't really bite us at all. I think we caught ourselves pretty quickly, but um, member, and maybe this happens everywhere, if you don't put it in writing, people are going to create their own answer, or they're going to say, you know, it's kind of like my kids, you know, like, well, you didn't say I couldn't, you know, climb onto the roof. Well, you know, I didn't realize I had to say that kind of thing. Um, you know, so you kind of almost have, it's, it's, uh, it's not great because we're all in the service industry. And so you almost have to have a list of here's what you can do and here's what you can't do. And, you know, it's there, we've got members who say, well, I'm, you know, you, you know, again, this is a small handful. You keep telling me what I can't do. Well, the problem is if you don't tell them what they can't do, they are going to try and do that. And so I think the more you can make it um, paint by numbers for them, the better. Now, the caveat to this is we've got a we've got a golf protocol document that we update every few days as we change. So we'll email blast out people and we'll also say, click a link here for the new golf protocols. And, you know, Jeff Fowler was, and I were just talking before we got on this is our golf protocols. Is, it's a two page document and it's really, there's tons of information to get lost in there. Now, I think most people are learning as they go along. So they don't have to go back and read the whole thing, but it's more there as a resource. So I think, Again, spell out as much as you can on the front end, but then also house it somewhere where they can where they can refer back to it. And you know, it's you're going to learn as you go along. Um, most people are very very sensitive about this, but some people are, depending sometimes on their personal views, their political views about why certain things are being done. You know, you you know you run into you can run into some challenges. So. Again, I might just come into something, but that's a I really appreciate that question. Um, and well, one thing that comes to mind now that you know when we started having golf back is because we've got to go food service. Our health order allows for food to go, but it has to be consumed. Really, the way it says is like you can't be with an eyesight of the facility. Um, so early on, we'd realized this when we'd removed all the furniture from outside the facility and brought it in the building, so people couldn't even be tempted to eat it. But we'd actually left some furniture just right out. I mean, it's literally right outside my office. I look right outside it um, more for people who were, you know, taking a rest after they got done their walk and were sitting down for a second. Well, we quickly realized that if you had furniture sitting around, people were going to sit in it and use it to eat. And so we, after a few days of trying to tell people that you couldn't sit around, we just removed the furniture. Um, same thing we ran in with golf carts. You know, we were disinfecting and cleaning them in advance. And so we start, we kind of said to ourselves, should we pull the golf carts out? Oh, let's pull them out. They're marked. They're in a location. Well, right away, golfers who were waiting to tee off would go and sit in the golf carts. And so then we realized, okay, so we, we've done a couple of different things. We've, you know, kind of cordoned off the area where the golf carts are sometimes. And we're maybe only bringing out one or two at a time. We've got them lined up in our car barn to bring out. So Again, it's sometimes in your various operations, you're going to stumble into the mistakes, but, you know, those are a few there. Um, so we'll, we'll talk, let's get into some, again, I think maybe some of these things will help out as well. So getting into what are your service levels going to be and what and setting expectations. So we keep hammering over and over again. We think of ourselves as a high service level, high touch facility, and we greet you at the bag drop. Um, if there's a guest, we're radioing into the, into the locker room, letting them know they're coming, we're escorting them there. We're getting the driving range. We're getting them loaded on the cart. We've got a lot of amenities that we can share. Um, we've got service on the driving range. We're almost, we're now almost all of that's gone. All of that's gone. So um, we reopened our range. So 10, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of the timeline here. So 10, 12 days ago, maybe almost two weeks ago, we opened up our range for warm up only. So if you look at that top right picture of the range, you can see there's four piles of balls that have no bag stand next to it. So those are, we would have a, station of four spots for the four golfers getting ready to tee off for a 10 minute warm up. So that's initially how we opened 10 minute warm up for those four. Then uh, this week we moved into, um, if you look at the far end down the range, the stands there, those are for members who just want to come and hit balls who aren't playing and we're doing a reservation system. So it's, you can book reservate, it's same day reservations. You can book reservations on the hour for 45 minute sessions of the range give you a five minute warning when it's done. And then when you, when you're done, the step out of the bag stand refills the balls, um, you know, and then gets the next person to come in. We haven't had a ton of people coming to do that. Um, I think that's, we, again, we went and operated out of caution. Um, that's where 
Oh, this is our third day. So we only started the reservations program on Tuesday. Uh, we'll see how it goes this weekend. My guess is that probably sometime next week we'll go back to regular. Well, we'll go back to a no range reservations range system, but we'll still have an area where people will have to check in. So if the range is full, you'll just have to wait your turn um, at that point. So, um, you know, that range reservation system was another huge layer of work that we had to do. Um, but, you know, we've got, we were able to do it because uh, some areas we've had to pull back service staff so we can have them working in, in different areas and, and support that. Um, and then the stand here at the end of the range, the lone stand, uh, we just started just Tuesday, we're starting to try out um, lessons. So we've had a few people come out for some lessons. Um, our health order is very unclear about that, um, but we've kind of watched what some other air, other clubs are doing with t- golf and tennis lessons. And so again, we're practicing social distancing. So for me as a former instructor who would be moving people's shoulders and hands and things like that, I, you know, I would have a tough time giving a lesson, but you figure it out, you adapt. So that's what we're doing with the driving range. Um, our county's health order doesn't allow for putting greens um, in short game areas. So we've we shut those down. I'm hoping those will be come back soon, uh, but that will be another area to manage as well. Um, talking about guests. So we had, we allowed no guests when we reopened for golf two and a half weeks ago. Then this past weekend, we allowed family guests. We have a whole definition of basically it's immediate family. Um, so we allowed that. So we had a few guests. And then this coming weekend, we're going to allow um, still family guests, but we're going to allow one uh, non-family guest per member. Um, you know, I, I, depending on how active and busy some of the courses in LA are, we might, I can see, because a lot of our members live in LA County. Um, so I can see some of them bringing people here. And, and also, again, people are still looking for something to do. Um, but it, again, it's really important to hammer home with your members that they've got to communicate to their guests in advance of, here's what you can expect. There's no locker room. There's no entering the clubhouse. Change your shoes in the parking lot. Nobody's going to touch your bag. There are no golf there are no golf carts. Um, we'll, well, actually, we'll talk about the golf carts in a second. Uh, on the flag sticks, you can see if you can look in that middle picture. So as of today, we're still using this. We're using an irrigation flag with a polyethylene foam insert. Um, a lot of the clubs around here have gone with the polyethylene foam. Um, there's sort of a mix of clubs that are around here that are using um, either no flag, they're using irrigation flags, or, you, or they are using a flag. The way you read our health order, it's a little bit funny. It sounds like, in one sense, it sounds like you can't use flag sticks. In another sense, it sounds like if you've created a no-touch environment, you can use a flag stick. You know, we've seen some of the clubs that that are using flag sticks, and some, I think, are doing it really better than others, where they're using a foam or a piece of PVC, so the ball's sitting near the top, so you really don't have to reach in. Some have it. You know, we've seen it. It's going down, and in my mind, you're still literally reaching in that. You're touching the hole, so... Um, we're, we're probably going to start playing around with having a proper flag stick in using the foam, but it'll be pretty similar to this with the, you know, with hopefully the ball sitting near the top. So you can kind of knock it away with the putter as best as possible. Again, it's, it's one of those things that's really challenging for all of us in, um, in trying to interpret what, how a flag sticks and, and certain operational things are supposed to go. I mentioned carts. I say we don't allow carts, but we are allowing carts, um, for golfers with uh, disabilities. So. Again, this is where I think there's been some, uh, let's just call it liberal interpretation uh, by some people about how that can that can be applied. Um, we're trying to keep a more uh, strict construct of, of how we're reading the order. Again, it's not it's not worth it's not worth it to us uh, in particular to uh, to try and push it. Um, although, again, I think the next round of our next round of um, protocols from the health order will, in our health internal health order will probably allow a little bit more of that. I talked about pull carts already. Um, you know, again, this is something that was not allowed at our club. Uh, I've already talked to, you know, kind of our managers here, loaded in a little bit with our golf and greens committee. And I think this is something that we'll probably make the operational decision to have this be allowed on a full-time basis going forward. Um, you know, I think there are certain, maybe certain um, things that people have concerns about pull carts being out there, but I think they're all very manageable. I think it's also another great way for people to get out and walk, get exercise, um, especially in the afternoons here when playing in the evenings of the summer is such a such an amazing time. Um, one thing, one other thing I should have mentioned um, in one of those other pictures with the pool carts is the way our those of you who played our golf course. Um, not if you watched on TV because they 
essentially flip the nines on TV. But um, our front nine who played here is a lot more difficult to walk. Um, and there's a couple, there's a couple really steep walks, a couple lengthy walks between holes. And so we were having a lot of people who just wanted to come out and really they could only play nine holes anyway on a good day. And walking that nine holes was really, really challenging for them. So uh, we, for right now, until we get golf carts back and, and, and maybe for a little while either after still, we've switched our nines so that they play the back nine first, front nine second, because uh, the back nine, if you just want to play nine holes, is um, is quite a bit easier to walk. So again, these are the small operational things that don't have to be a permanent change, but if you look at it in a, in a temporary sense, really can be, a, a, again, a nice, thoughtful gesture to your, your members, your clients, your guests. Um, you know, it's the, the, you know, talking about the driving range, talking about the guests, talking about golf carts, you know, it's, it's a reintroduction. You know, you have to figure out how are you doing it? How are you bringing it back safely? You can't go from zero to a hundred right away. So, you know, you've got to focus on the cleanliness. Um, do you have, what are your protocols going to be for cleaning golf carts? So, you know, even though we're only cleaning a handful of golf carts right now, you know, we're prepared for when the switch gets flipped and also assuming it'll probably, probably be single rider carts. So, you know, how do you, okay, how do you, where do you have staff? Where do you store the carts? How do you clean them? When, you know, when are they going to be ready to go out? How are you going to turn them? How are you going to manage that process? If all of a sudden every, you get foursome after foursome after foursome. Fortunately, we're lucky enough that um, we have mem a lot of members who have their own private carts who live in the community or that store them with us. So they can take those carts and, um, you know, saves us using the carts. But, you know, again, keep hammering home that it's gradual steps you know, let people know how much you're concerned about them. Um, I think people, like something else we've done on Instagram and in a lot of our emails is we've taken pictures of how we're cleaning. Um, we've taken pictures of how the staff is spaced out, um, how we're using UV light at night in, in the areas that have been high traffic to try and, you know, fill anything. Um, so, you know, again, it's, it's showing that you care, showing that you're, that you're there for, you know, there for your guests and your members. Um, you can see down there in the bottom right, you know, we've got one of our managers, he and I, uh, one day stood on stood, stood curbside where there was some food delivery going on just to say hello to everybody. And just to, um, you know, just to let people know we were there, we were thinking about them, you know, and they were, again, that was, it's shocking, but it also makes you feel good about the job you're doing, you know, to say hello to people. So, you know, I know we've got pros and uh, members of varying levels and varying, varying jobs, but I think, you know, for those of you who do have some level of connection, you know, with uh, with your clientele, like be out there and let them know, you know, thank them for being there. Let them know you appreciate what they're, you know, what they're doing, that they're coming out, that they're supporting you. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to forget sometimes, you know, sometimes we get in this dollars and cents business and you, and especially in this time where you get so focused on the protocols and so focused on the next steps, it can be easy to forget about, you know, what you're there for. You're there for the people, you know, who, who work for you. You're there for the people who you're working for and you're serving you know, and it kind of goes back to one of those messages that I was sharing with you about when we had the wildfires is, and I kept keep trying to remind myself of this day in and day out. It's about the people. It's about making sure your staff's okay. Their families are okay. They understand what's going on in their jobs. They're coming back to a safe working environment that the guests know we guests members know we care about them. They're coming back to enjoy a safe environment. They're taking food to go from a safe environment. Um, so really, again, it's just, it's, it's back to the communications. Perfect segue. Um, so oh, food wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, question, question. You have a question on driving range. So before we move, yep. move on to, to food, this is from Tony Chavez and Tony, you say it's maybe a dumb question. There's no such thing. Um, just, just dumb Rob, people, what, Tony. What, <laughs> Rob, what protocol are you using to clean, uh, the range balls? Are you using any special disinfectant or just plain old soap and water? Um, I, so, Tony, if you reach out to me at the end, or if anybody reaches out by email, I can tell you, Jeff Fowler, our director of golf, I believe we're using primarily soap and water, but I do think he's added in, um, I'm going to say some kind of disinfectant or bleach to it. Um, so I'm not 100% sure, I don't, and I don't want to give you the wrong information, but I can tell you I can tell you what we're doing if you reach out by email at the end. Sorry, I don't have a better better answer there. And Tony, I can post Rob's email in uh, in the chat box here. But I believe it's going to be on your last slide, also. Yeah, it's on the last slide. Yeah, if you put it in the chat box, that's awesome. Thanks. Okay, Andy. thank you. So, food and beverage. Um, again, some of you have nothing to do with food and beverage. Some of you have a lot to do with food and beverage. Um, take away what you want from this, if you will. Apply it to some of your other 
um, resources. So, you know, this was something that we realized that we could do in a hurry. Um, you know, we shut down. So we found out going back to I'm trying to remember the exact date or March 15th or whatever that Sunday was, uh, maybe early, maybe March 12th or something, whatever that Sunday was at emergency board meeting discussed that um, we'd actually found out that a few hours before that we'd had some wedding guests a week prior who'd gone home to Canada and tested positive for the virus. So we immediately shut down the facility um, just out of abundance of caution. And I think that was also what a lot of facilities were starting to do right then. Um, but we realized we didn't have anybody who tested positive. We had nobody who was showing any signs. We were by that point about 10 days away. So we pretty quickly got it to go um, to go food and beverage operation uh, up and running. We had a very simple menu. We let the members know what we were going to be doing, how we we're going to be doing it. Um, we wound up having um, time slots for people to book. So basically you were making, it was almost like you were making a res restaurant reservation, but you were making reservation to pick up your food. So we were doing dinner starting, um, really start, we'd say five o'clock, we really started about four o'clock. So every 15 minutes, you would have four slots for people to pick up. So we did that all the way through seven. We actually expanded to 7.30. Lunch started, we would start taking orders for lunch and dinner at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, lunch would go from 11 till four. Then we'd really run the lunch menu with, about a half dozen entree options and some soup specials as well. Um, so you can see a lot. The top left picture is was one of our busier nights. That was a, we did a specialty night um, on that might have been that might have been Easter, but I think that was a, yeah that might have been Easter. Um, so we you know, run a specialty menu. So we're utilizing our banquet kitchen, using our grill kitchen. Um, you know, you can see we're do what we do everything we can to, to keep properly spaced. You got the guys with gloves and, and masks on. Um, you know, the the downside of not having banquets is you don't have the banquet, you don't have the revenue. The upside is now you have a banquet kitchen that can do a ton of food prep for you. Um, so we really utilize that a lot. We those guys were the ones kind of coming up with a lot with a lot of the food specials. Our chef de cuisine, who normally runs our um, a la carte option in our tennis clubhouse, which is a, kind of the hub for all la carte dining. He now was able to, we've consolidated all our operations in our golf clubhouse. So he was running the specials. They were trying out different things in the banquet kitchen. So it was really nice. Like we almost had like a test kitchen and a prep kitchen in one. They could really help support our grill kitchen who was putting out all the food. And I think the, you know, the, uh, you know, the, one of the keys was is communicating to the members about what, you know, what we're doing, what we're able to do again, back about the cleanliness, you know, letting them know about menus, the specials are something that would have been really a big hit um, just because it's it's something new. And we have we have found that people don't, you know, I think a lot of people, while you want to be out of your house, there's plenty of people who also don't want to go into public areas that they don't know, like a grocery store, um, when they don't have to. And, you know, we, we joke sometimes about our membership is that they have the cleanest kitchens in the world because they don't cook. Well, and we're seeing it. We're doing... Um, about 150 covers a day, mostly in dinner. Um, so we're, you know, we've got a pretty robust business that's going on. Um, we've I talked about the specials. Holidays has been has been really, um, you know, really something we've taken, you know, taken um, special attention to. So Easter was a big, big day for us. I think we did 250 covers or so. Um, Cinco de Mayo was roughly 250 covers as well. Uh, we got Mother's Day where we're doing a totally different concept, we're basically doing packages uh, for um, two, four, and six people where they can do it. There's a breakfast package, and we've got a brunch package, and I think we're we're up in the up in the three hundreds now for for the covers there. So again, like these holidays still go on. Oh, sorry, actually, I think that that top left picture was actually our Passover. Um, so we have a, a pretty large Jewish membership now. We're not Hillcrest who manages managed to do i think about 1500 covers um you know during passover but you know we did manage to do i think about 100 or 150 200 covers that night as well so you know there there are still these meaningful times and holidays and occasions that are going on for people um, that, that you can take advantage of we're now getting into kind of viewing ourselves as a catering company and looking at with a lot of graduations coming up we're going to be getting into the to go food business for graduation. So we're putting together um, graduation packages also, which will apply equally to uh, special occasion packages. So if there's anniversaries, birthdays, or anything else that people are celebrating, um, you know, we can do that. We're 
in the middle, probably next looks like next week we'll be kicking off a market concept um, where people can buy. You know, there's certain things that we can get access to that maybe their markets can't. You know, in terms of like produce and proteins and and some other things. And I think that's going to be appealing because again, it's it's they view us as a safe environment, uh, much as they view you as a safe environment. So they're, they're going to want to come to you. And ABC has relaxed all kinds of laws on how you can sell. We already had a uh, a wine license that allowed us to sell to go wine and ABC's relax some of the things. So look at, you know, look to see locally what you can do um, with wines and spirits. We've sold, when I look at the numbers, it's mind blowing. We were selling an average of uh, $1,500 a day in to go wine. Now we have some people who have some serious wine sellers, but you've also got to be burning through quite a bit of wine to, to do that. So um, again, depending on the liquor licenses you have and um, you know, where, what the rules are and laws are in your local area, Look to see what you can do with to go. You've we're seeing lots of restaurants around here doing batch to go cocktails that, you know, that they can sell in sealed containers, or more and more vendors are offering a, a pre mixed beverage or a beverage that you can essentially mix um, when you get home. So it's, you know, it's again, it's uh, it's just kind of interesting. And just the last point on the lower left things you don't, so back to I think it was whoever was asking about it um, earlier, the things we didn't anticipate um, was. We, we caught this pretty quickly because you know, you're planning to go food operation and you start thinking about the staff you need in. And we have one cook who does most of our employee meals. And we realized well, buffets are not, we can't do an employee buffet. So we started doing um, pre portion, pre packaged meals. Um, so you can see below there, like that was a, that day was a chili, which I said uh, serving one, one container serves eight. But so you need to think a little bit, you know, make sure you're, you guys are probably well past this, but if you are offering, um, you know, if you are offering something to go, whether it's for your employees or whether it's for um, your clientele, make sure, think about the portioning, make sure it's appropriate, make sure you've got the containers. And that was another thing, things we were, you know, kind of stumbled into where, you know, I of course have all these brilliant ideas about what we can do and then realize that, you know, if we don't have the right containers to do to certain to go things, then you need to hit pause until you do get the right container. So we also looked at that as an, it was an opportunity to improve our to-go container um, offering for the membership. Um, again, sort of, sort of happy accidents, if you will. Go to the next slide, Bryce. Um, and okay, I think this is the second to last one, but you know, again, this may apply to you guys. Um, you know, with the, we've already touched on tennis. You know, this was we've got a really large tennis program. Um, hard courts, clay, grass. I, I should say tennis. I should have said racket sports because we also have three pickleball courts that we just recently built. Um, you know, so this was something that we could get back to. I think this is one area that can be reasonably socially distant. Um, you know, we, it's tough when you're, of course, it's tough when you're playing doubles to make sure you're not running into one another. But um, it's interesting. The members who are playing tennis or are playing doubles are very aware of it. They talk about, you know, they're taking it very seriously. They, they took it much, took this thing much more seriously than the golfers at first. They would actually write their own name on the tennis balls so that you were only serving and picking up your tennis ball. Um, so again, it was whether whatever you believe or don't believe about the epidemiology and the spread of the virus, they were taking these precautions. Um, unfortunately, you can't see a great, and I took a little too far away, I should have zoomed in. Uh, that top right picture is that was a member who was out uh, practicing his uh, fly fishing casting with uh, some of his kids and friends. So, you know, just again, big lawn that we've had. We, you know, um, think about the spaces that you have. Think about how you can use them safely. Think about what you can offer to people. Um, and it, it's just, it's, it really kind of does energize you when you've been locked in your office or locked at home working from home and seeing this uh, ability for people to get out and, and do things and, and, and again, just whatever rules and policies you have in place, relax them. It can be temporary. And sometimes you're going to luck into some things that, you know, that are, that you start off as temporary and realize they need to be something that's more permanent. Um, already touched on the lessons there that we're, that we're um, starting to do, you know, on a, on a limited basis and we see how that goes. Um, but really it's, uh, you know, step by step, Bryce, I think that's the last slide. Is that correct? Wrong to my, yeah. Um, just go slow. Don't be, nobody's going to be a hero or a goat. Do what you can when you can try and do it as well as you can. And just keep reminding yourself, reminding the staff, 
people are excited to be back. You know, some people are going to be hyper cautious. Some people are going to be pushing the boundaries. You've got to just be calm. You've got to be the one, you know, to be the voice of reason as, as you know, when you're in those positions, be the leader of your facility. You know, and again, hopefully we're all looking back at this in a few months and it's a distant memory and, you know, and, uh, and we're back to quote unquote normal, whatever, whatever normal is going to be. But I, I wish you all well. I don't know if we have any more questions, but I, again, my email is below and I'm happy to answer anybody. I know there's a look at the names. I know there's a few of you. Um, we already connect them on a few different levels, but I'm, I'm always happy to reach out and, and have a talk. And, and again, I'm one of the things you guys realize probably is there's, there's no days off. We're all on call right now, pretty much 24 seven, trying to figure this out. So thanks for letting me be here today. And Nikki, anything else from you? Rob, thank you so much. Um, I think we've covered all the questions that were submitted. Um, someone did ask if this will be posted later. It will be posted on our website and on our YouTube channel. I did include the link there. Um, that'll happen later today or, or first thing tomorrow morning, um, as our, all of our webinars are archived there on that YouTube channel. Um, so again, Rob, can't thank you enough. This was great information. I know it'll be really, really helpful for those that are getting ready to open. Um, we appreciate you taking your time. We know you're extremely busy. Um, so appreciate your insight and, um, those, uh, we will be doing another session of back to business next Thursday. We'll be joined by John Kulo from Monterey country club out on the desert. So we'll have some Coachella Valley representation there. Um, we look forward to hearing from John. So can't thank you enough, Rob. And, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, you will receive your MSR credit. So don't worry, just be a little bit patient with us and, um, look forward to seeing everyone soon. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks so much. Thanks, Rob. Thank you.